Good morning, folks. We have now watched the solar tornadoes creep into view, hold tight, turn, and now they begin to face Earth. They are plasma filaments, and they currently sit as the top eruption threat on our star right now. They could begin producing Earth-directed CMEs today. The solar flaring has flatlined since yesterday's M-class flare. The southern group departs the disk, and the north is weak enough that we'll focus on the south incoming. The central group had some negative development behind the primary positive umbral core, but it needs more. Some umbral birth can be seen ahead of the limb spots. I'm very anxious to see if that continues today. Solar wind. The speed and plasma temperature in yellow and green began falling the last 24 hours with a steady and stable density in orange. Electron flux is returning to normal. Nice smooth curves back on the magnetometer as well, and the KP shows our shield is strong and calm. We await the trans-equatorial negative corona hole coming in, red, more visible on the south first. This can also be seen in 211 angstroms. The southern extension has become visible there at the left. Major quake watch coming up with that coronal hole. And while we wait, we can see that as Mercury and Venus break their lineup with the Sun, today we see Mercury and Jupiter opposite the Sun, with Venus creeping in there tomorrow. All while Earth drifts between Jupiter and Mars. And while we wait for the uptick, quaking remains moderate at best, near Antarctica and up through the Atlantic, with the top quake of the day being of unusual location here in eastern Greenland. Website members, yesterday's fly on the wall ended up being a fairly epic show. We discussed a major development in the Earth spots hypothesis with Earth's version of a solar flare. We discussed how cosmic rays trigger volcano eruptions and how that relates to our earthquake paper. And we also had David on from ADAPT 2030. He was discussing climate extremes in the coming cold. If you don't know his channel and his mini Ice Age playlist, I highly recommend it. We're still watching Kate drift into nowhere in the Indian Ocean, but we've also got a storm brewing just offshore of the Philippines. This one's slated to roll over the islands and head for southern Vietnam. Still got the wild temperature flux in the U.S., still based on that low creeping eastward across the states. I'm zoomed out so you can see that the western half will stay chilled a bit due to a jet stream dip allowing cold air to funnel down. And it doesn't need much persuasion with the polar vortex split driving a reinforced flow right down into the dip. So while we retain the storm and flood warnings to the east, the areas north and west of the convergence are experiencing winter, to put it lightly. New convergence still well out to sea, but the high to the east is wrapping it back to Norway. The previous low is driving southeast with a hooking convergence over the Spanish coastline now. You see the clouds come back around and the southeastern low draping its cloud line back to Spain. Really no surprises here in purple. Not the case down under. That convergence line is not so easy to see today, but in truth it is just a bit weaker. You can see the node between nations there. And the cloud line pretty much looks like it has the past few days. Rain boots in Darwin again. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.25 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.